A broader amount, uh, so tense. I mean, everything you say there is 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 really true. Just to add up to that, you know, um, I've actually uh, been in the in the school room a few times, and then everything you say there is 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 perfectly true. And then we still practice that today. You know, I've been there a few times uh, with my parents and years ago, and I've been there a few times uh, where I was told to go there because I was facing certain issues. So I had to say what I've got to say. Like you say again, you speak to the ancestor like you were speaking to your dad. It's no, so you just like, he's there. You're just talking to him about what you're facing, what you want him to do and anything you think that it's not working. And then you think that maybe he could, he could look into that. He could help you for that. So uh, I've been there and I did all the, the ritual I was taught to do. And it doesn't stop me going to the, at the time, going, going to the Catholic church. I, was, I, I mean, I was still Catholic, but I was doing it and then going, going to the church. And then the person who brought me over there was going to the church every Sunday as well. So uh, I think in the Bible, they don't look at, when they, they, we come to the tradition, we don't really care what religion you came from, as long as you connect to your ancestor. You know, that's not a problem. You can still practice your religion, but you have to be connected to your ancestor. I don't know if uh, if it makes sense. Yes, no. yes, sir. You 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 just summarize um, pretty much. Uh, you know, yeah. Well, and it's good that you lived it because we need to live this thing. We need to experience these things. Uh, so when we talk to our brothers and sisters here who are trying to reconnect, we need to talk to them in a in a standpoint. We actually do this thing. It's not in a. It's not. We're not just. We're not talking about a book that we read. These mm. are the things that we do. Yeah. So. Uh, and also, we give food to them. Whatever they like when they were alive, you give food to them. Okay? Um, um, if they like, sometimes you even use perfume that they like because that's what's going to invite them. Mm -hmm. Trust me, they never left. They're still there. You just don't see it. You just can't see them. Right? Okay. I'm going to tell you something right now. In Africa, there is no such thing as emptiness. This bottle right now that I'm holding, right? You look at it, it might look empty. Well, there is water kind of, but if you can see a bottle like this, it looks like it's empty. But a wise African man will never tell you it's empty, ever. There is no such thing as emptiness in nature. It's always something, but you just don't see. That's it. Just like the darkness never leave. Dark is the omnipresent. This is why even the name of God, the most high in the Bible tradition, when you say see, it's the same word that we, that we used to say when something is too dark and see, see. When something is too dark, and see, see, but God in see. So it is that darkness that's always there. When you go in a room, you turn on the light. That room was dark, but you turn on the light. Oh, you might think the darkness is gone. No. The light is going to be temporarily. That darkness is actually is always there. You just don't see. The light that comes to, from the light bulb, that thing that see lighting up because of the filament, being burned by an electric current. Now you see the reflection of the light. It doesn't mean that the darkness have left. The darkness never leaves. They just found this out in quantum physics. It never leaves. It is the same thing as nature. The problem is that the perception of our eye is very limited, right? Just like our hearing, we can only hear sounds, that will vibrate from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That's when a human being can perceive the sound. But anything else by that bandwidth of that range, a human being cannot perceive no more. Animals now can perceive them. That's why you have some, you have a, the E, for instance, the falcon, they can perceive song in very high frequencies, but human being cannot perceive. So. Because you cannot perceive a sound doesn't mean that that sound does not exist. It does exist, but your perception is limited as a human being. 
Therefore, when you look at the empty bottle, it might look empty to you, but it's only because you don't see what's inside. You don't see what's inside. So in Africa, spirit, the presence of those insane things are always there around us, always. We just don't see it. When you get to a certain level of understanding of nature to the plane, to the point where you become a, a high priest or camp, there are certain things now you're gonna be able to perceive. That's why people come and consult with you because you got to that level of knowledge where you're able to perceive these things with the help of different things like plants or some of the element of nature, but you're gonna be able to connect to those entities. Same thing with ancestry. I don't know if it's clear. So I want you to understand the importance of us being always in contact and in harmony, you know, with our ancestors. They are our angels, you want it or not. But they are allies and your angels, but you have the key to make them walk you. Now, if you forget about them, they're also gonna forget about you. There's no way, because you have the key to bring the link. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to ask a, a quick uh, testimony. Uh, I remember a long time ago, um, my mom, she, she called me and then she says that uh, us, the grandchildren, I mean, uh, of her dad, we need to, her dad apparently is not happy with us because it looked like we just abandoned him. And I was, uh, and I was like, what do you mean by that mom? Because, I mean, granddad was gone like, you know, when I was very, very young, she said that, yeah, because uh, when she went back in the in the village, the roof, they built on the on top of the, the school room, there was a leak on it. So there was a lot of water going inside the house and then we need to fix it. And we said, that, okay, how much I got to fix? She said that all the grandchildren have to put something. It's not that she cannot fix it, but we have to contribute, doesn't matter how much, so we can put the roof, we can change the roof, and then he's gonna be happy. So I mm. couldn't I couldn't figure out because I wasn't really into the tradition at the time. I couldn't understand why he's gonna be angry. How can he be angry? He's been dead a long time ago. So after that, when I get to know more about the tradition and everything, and then it's true. So if you abandon, like maybe the ancestor, you build something there and then you don't you don't visit that, you don't clean it, you don't do anything then thing can happen in the family that you're going to understand why is it this thing keep happening because they're not happy when they're not happy it does manifest on the thing who can happen in the family there may be things are not working and anything like that and then you have to go and resolve the problem and it's actually quite easy to resolve that issue you just have to go there and then do the small thing or two and then that's it everything is back to normal again yeah and um a, a question on that um, when you do, I mean, only if you're allowed to share, only share what, what you're allowed to share. Um, yes. When you go to the skull house or when you do communicate with them, do they communicate back? Like, is it like you hear their voice? Like, does their voice sound like how it sounded when they were alive? Or is the communication one of the things where you come in or you, you, you ask for something or you say something and then maybe the communication on their end would be maybe, you know, you just see the result that you were asking for, or is it like how we're talking? Like, do you, do you actually hear a voice? And if so, is it the voice that they had when they were alive or does it sound different? You know, if, if you're, if you're allowed to share any of this. Uh, brother, the first time uh, I went there, I mean, each time I went in there, you can feel certain force. They don't communicate to you. You communicate to them. But uh, the way you're feeling, I mean, like if you're scared of things, you immediately, you, you kind of like feel confident, you feel comfortable. You know, it, it could be the place that maybe if you're in the whole village and then you, you get scared of maybe around a certain area of the village, it would be that place that if you get in there, you can actually spend the whole, the, the whole, the whole holiday in there without actually being scared of anything because you feel comfortable. There's just something immediately will actually kind of like uh, empower you the way you feel and, uh, okay. and the, the way you are. And then again, um, you can only see the result after that. So when you get out of there and then you can see that things are changing, everything is, is fine, everything is correct. You can only see, so you don't actually get to 
to hear them or anything like that. But sometime in your dream, you can you can hear them. Okay. Yeah, sometime. Yeah. And, and see, I'm somebody yeah. where I, I'll have dreams yes. with my ancestors all the time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. I've got another testimony. I mean, I had it. I had it. I had an, an, an uncle who passed out. I've never met him. I never knew him. So, um, uh, one is so like in, in, in Cameroon, when people got ma get married, you know, they had like, like a massive uh, ceremony in the street, the, the, the car, the, the drum, the, the dancing, people walking around. So I was probably about seven, eight. And then I was about to cross the road to get to the other side where I could hear the drum, I could see people dancing and everything. And then uh, I've heard a voice, you know, I've never, like I said, my uncle, I probably, he, pro he, 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 I was probably just like a baby. So I've never actually had a conversation with him or anything, but I'd hear a voice with a picture, you know, his picture. So when I look, at, when, when I turn around to look at the person who was calling me and there was an accident, just exactly where I was going to be crossing. Oh, wow. I would just smash that. And I looked, wow. I couldn't find him, you know, and I could see his picture, you know, but I was like, you know, I, that was going to be me exactly there. So if that ancestor didn't call me, stop me to keep progressing where I was going, I wouldn't probably be talking today. So wow. they can guide you, you can hear them. And then you just, uh, our brother Mont, you know, says, uh, you just need to be connected to them. And then that, that's it. Well, and um, here's a little bit of testimony yes. as well. Mm. Um, yeah. I want to... I'm, I'm sorry. Mm. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, just real quick. Um, uh, when, I, when I got married, of course, my wife was from Cameroon and um, the father, when he was living, he's now deceased, but, you know, of course he did the rites. Now, when he did the rites with, you know, my wife, of course, I wasn't in the room. I was somewhere else. And um, I don't know what occurred in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I will say that I started feeling like a very invigorating feeling going up my spine. You know, and, um, you know, when I when I communicated with my, my wife about it, I realized the same time that I felt that invigorating feeling go up my spine was the same time they actually did uh, that particular right. So when when when, you know, and I felt like powerful, I felt like I wanted to run and fly or something. It was wild. But um, but so it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of what you were saying when you were talking about some of the experiences that. That, that you went through. And that's something that I experienced without even physically being present in that particular situation. Funny. Yeah. yeah, so thank you, brother. Thank you. Yes, um, to complete what our brother and monk uh, yes, they will uh, speak to you, they will speak to you uh, different, by different avenues through, through dreams I can use dreams, just like um, there are ways also to get answers. But, you know, I'm just going to give you a little bit picture of it. I cannot go in details. Uh, we have way also to get the answer by using some of the Cory shell, you know, that we're going to drop on the floor and some other stuff that we drop on the floor. You know how they are, we exactly what what's the answer, what they're saying. But in order to do that, you need to go with somebody who is very initiated from your family to be able to make this reading. So yes, they have ways to communicate. They're never like, it's never like, okay, you're gonna be in the room and they're gonna be speaking to you. You're gonna listen to them right there at that moment. Uh, yeah, it's not like that. There are some heavier, there are some heavier ritual where they're saying they make the dead talks. They make the dead talk, but that's another level, okay? I'm not even allowed to speak on that. It's very, um, Understand. yeah, that's very, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, these things, as you get to, Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And if I can have add something on these things, when I was, my mom used to tell us, uh, when you go to to that room, sometimes if you come with, sometimes if you come with, uh, maybe you will come in to ask something, and maybe you're not doing right. 
suppose maybe you have a, a bad idea, you do something wrong, and then you go to that room to ask something. Sometimes they don't even accept you. It's not like you drop some wine on the floor or on the score, and you don't see any any an, or any answer come through it. Like if you drop the salt or or wine on your floor, even in your house now, maybe you, you, you're gonna see some insect coming around and just be there. But you sometimes you go on that home, do any kind of ritual, but nothing happens. It's not like there is no kind of thing. That can mean you have to do more, you have to do something more. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. those are the ends. So the food that you're dropping the food that you cook, whether the meat, that palm oil that you drop on the floor, if you don't see the ant in a matter of minutes, get coming and eat that, yeah, that's a sign that they're not, they're not answering to you. They're not happy. So that means there's something that you got to do on your part. That like you can't go in there. You are, like I said, you're a lazy person or you're a person who steals and do those bad things, but yet you want to come. A little bit like a person who, you know, quote unquote, you know, um, does bad stuff all the time, but yet you go see your answers for them to help you all the time. It doesn't work like that. So there is going to be sign, as she said, that they, they're just not answering to you. They're just not communicating. They, and then those things will happen. There are other stuff. I just don't want to speak about it right now. I cannot speak. Yeah, there are some yeah, other yeah, things. I understand that. Yeah. Fully understand yeah. that. So, yeah. so I guess also the same way that you have to be really a good person to be an ancestor, you also have to be a good person to communicate with them as well. You have to be, you have to be, you have to be aspiring. You have to come there with one heart. Like when you go to meet them, they're in the spiritual realm. You cannot hide anything to them. They know your ends, they know exactly your inner. You direct there, it's you, you come physically, but it's really you, your spirit communicating with them. They're two different realms, right? Now. Okay, I'm working on this business. I've been working my ass, man. I work and I study. Why I don't I keep, I keep I keep failing this class, even though I'm studying so hard. I'm studying until five in the morning. I do my best, but it, it's like something is blocking me. You don't have control of, but they can clearly see you. Do, you're trying to do what you have to do, man. They're gonna help you. No question asked. Wow. Awesome. I, I really appreciate all this information. You know, this is stuff that we lost over, you know, the generations. And, you know, it's actually mm -hmm. a good thing that people like yourself and um, Princess and, you know, Brother Monkham, you know, still practice it and know it to where, like, as you said before, you, you didn't read this from a book. It's not something that somebody had to explain to you outside of your family. So this is something that you really know about. You lived it. You're not making up anything. You're not guessing anything. Like you really know exactly what you're talking about. Whereas somebody like myself, you know, I would have to, I would have to get it from someone like you, or in a book. So I appreciate all of you for um, all the answers. Thank you, brother. You, that's, you're what, very that's what we're here for. That's what we're here to share, to share knowledge and everything. I would like to add something. Yes, princess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, concerning the fact that um, our brother asked to know whether they speak with us or not. I would like to say that they always speak to us, but the problem is that we have to, uh, to be very attentive in order to hear because they can pass through some people, they can speak through dreams. There are many ways through which they speak to us. Uh, uh, I, for instance, uh, I'll give an example. Uh, I've been talking here about the Ndop Festival. I would say that uh, many times when I pass uh, through um, television or radio, they always ask, do you think that your ancestors are with you? And I say, and uh, a pastor even asked me the other day, with all what you are doing, I'm seeing your works on Facebook and all those things. What is your protection? I know he was trying to tell me that I have to come to Jesus for his protection. But I told him, what I know is that I have my ancestors with me. 
and they are always there to protect me. That is the answer I gave to him. And he said, I have nothing else to say since you, you seem to know what you're counting on. And before that uh, festival, I had a dream. I was in the secret, uh, the sac secret forest in our village in Batu Farm, and I was passing through uh, uh, queens. There were, there were two lines of queens dressed with ndop. I was passing um, in their middle without wearing a ndop, but I was passing and they were, they were, were at the one side and other. Then I did not understand the meaning of that dream. I even called somebody and said, I had a dream today, but I don't understand. But it is maybe many months after that, I was discussing with a king, the king of Bangulap, we were discussing like that, and I told him, I had a dream. This is what happened in my dream. And he said, why are you trying? Why are you worrying about that? The ancestors were, were there, were telling you what you they are calling you to do. That is when I, and even now, I'm, I face challenges, but I don't know how do I manage? How do I, but at time I want to, there is discouragement, but there is, there are always solution. Then I believe that my ancestors are there. They are guiding me. They are, link they are linking me to people who will help who will put their hands for that for us to 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 really accomplish that mission i will just give an example like that and i can the other day okay i went to the village the cac ceremony that is going on now since a few weeks in the history of that dance, we have, they have never seen women dancing, a part of uh, the mothers of twins and the, the, the Kamshi, the, 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 when I arrived say. in the village, the king told me, why is it that women do not dance? I would like to know what, hind what is the hindrance to that? And he said, I would like you to dance. But since you are there to take pictures, how are we going to do? And we were two, two, two princesses. He wanted us to dance for the first time in history. Then when I when uh, I when I, I went to sleep and I know I knew that tomorrow I will continue to take pictures. I, I usually do. During the whole night, I dreamt I was dancing. So the, in the morning, I went to look for the king and I asked him, what do they need for someone to dance? He said, nothing. And I said, this night I was dancing in my dream. So I have, I need to dance. And I have my friend who is coming. She's going to take pictures. Then he said, okay, there's no problem. But today I understand that if there are many people asking, why is it you are destroying culture? But the what the question I'm asking them is that for you to understand why uh, girls or why women have danced for the first time, you have to ask the question to know why have they not been dancing? Then you understand, you have the answer to the question. Then uh, I wanted just to give those two examples like that for us to understand that there are many ways through which our ancestors can speak to us. At times, this is true, maybe through the look of a child. Maybe your child will look at you and you have the feeling that it is maybe your grandfather. At times, it is as if it is the eyes of your grandfather who is looking at you. There are many, we just have to be vigilant and know how to receive the message of our ancestors. Thank you very much, Princess. And um, I'm also going to give um, one more testimony that I have. Um, I was um, I was I was 
six or seven years old, you know, six years old, maybe even older than that, maybe even five. Yeah, it was a long time ago. My dad wanted to go, he wanted to go, he, that morning, uh, he wanted to go to work. He's, um, he's a self-made pretty much. He's been big time farmer. And then also he does farming like uh, vegetable farming and also animal farming like um, uh, ch um, chicken. And he was going to go to work that morning. But that morning, for some reason, I cried so hard and I didn't want him to leave. I was holding his hand to the point where, man, everybody was like, why are these kids crying so hard? He doesn't want his father to leave. To the point where I was throwing myself from not trying to hold him. He kind of pushed me. I'm going, well, what's going on? Stay, I'm coming back. I was like, don't go. I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go. I don't even know why I was doing it. Finally, luckily that my dad, in my family, he's very traditional, very traditional. My dad stepped out. I was still crying. My mom closed the door. I'm banging the door. No, I don't want him to go. I don't want him to go. Five minutes later, my dad comes back. His door, my mom opens the door. He comes back. My mom's like, what's going on? He goes like, mm -mm. I'm not going to work today. Mom goes like, wait, are you just going to, you know, this kid, I mean, you always, you always, you always go to work. I mean, sometimes, he do, yes, he, he doesn't want you to go because I mean, obviously he likes to play with you. But, you know, but my dad said, no, this time he never cried like this when I left. Guess what happened? The same evening, he get, he get, he get, um, at that time, obviously there's, there's no cell phone. One of his friends comes home. And his friend is telling him that the car they usually were taking to go to his farming place, whoever, the, the guy who was driving that car, drove that car drunk that day, and he did like a really bad accident. He was in a very good condition. You know? Now, you ask me, was that the one talking to my dad, crying? No. So just like the princess say, they will sometimes use in your own children to speak to you, to make you, um, to make you avoid certain things, especially to protect you. You just gotta be able to kind of like sit down sometime and think like, hmm, this is unusual. What's the message here? You know, yes, that was, uh, my dad actually mentioned that to me a couple of times that, uh, yeah, you know, it's, um, yeah, so it's, it's powerful, man. This is very powerful. Um, now you understand why they did, they did everything they, they, they could, this white man. You know, when I say them, when I talk about them, I'm talking about who came to really make us leave everything that we're doing, whether it's changing our name, changing our culture, to take theirs, they knew the power that we had in it. That's why they would never want us to go back to it. You know. Powerful. Wow, this, this is really empowering. And I, I just really wish that more people who are born and raised, um, particularly in Bamaleke culture, if more people appreciate it, you know, really what, what, you know, what, what people have, like, I see so many people look, look down on tradition and, you know, they value Westernization and colonization and all the things that came with it and, and look at what the ancestors left us as being primitive or being demonic. If more people really embrace this and just appreciated it, because when it's taken from you, you realize what you got. So a lot of us who are reconnecting and learning the culture, you know, I think that maybe there's a level of appreciation that we might have for it that some who take it for granted don't because we know what it feels like not to have it. So when we hear these things and we're listening to all these different examples that all of you have given us, you know, we can think of times in our life where we like, man, this, this would have been great, you know, to, to know something like this or to have access to this. Um, because we got access to the same things that people value over the culture, you know, and 
you know, things may or may not have went a certain kind of way. But we're hearing the examples that you all are giving where you practice the culture and you got results. You know, it's, it's really empowering to hear these um, testimonies that you all are giving and the fact that you're sharing the information. And, and as I said before, the fact that you embrace the culture is why we have in this conversation that you know it, that you can share it with someone. It, it's beautiful. Thank you, Prince. Yes, so you know, Prince Kwani, you you say everything. You know, like uh, even myself, uh, when I used to be young, you know, uh, I was the same way. Where I was like, no, no, that's not my thing. You know, but when you get to actually experience thing, where you're a little bit older, and then you look at thing, and then you understand thing, you learn about thing more, and then you kind of like, wow, you know what? It's actually awesome. You know, the things that we actually still practice or the thing you can actually compare with what Brother Monte showed us about the leopard skin in Egypt and going back to what we do at the moment today. And trust me, if you actually go to Bamleke uh, funeral anytime, maybe when you're in Cameroon, you're going to see the same thing. You're going to see the same thing. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to ask. Yeah. yeah. And also, before we close, before I forget, please, let me bring this fact again. In Cameroon, there are more than 250 to 60 tribes. The Bambiliki is a group of people with a lot of villages. Princess, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. We have more than 57 to 60 villages right now, maybe more. And, and Surprisingly, we all those tribes, they are the ones who are very successful. And when I say success, I can speak to I can speak like this with any money and real shame. We know what's going on. We live in Cameroon. You know, the economy of the country, like those who built the country, I'm, I'm not saying that those the other do, do not do anything, but those who really have an impact as far as bringing economy to the country. It's that group of people. Hmm. But the only thing these people do differently than, the, than anybody else is that they're very connected to their ancestors. Is it the reason why? Let me bring you another fact too. When you're connected to your, to your ancestors, you become accountable. You see, this is why in the Bamileke, and I wish you guys traveled to one of those villages. Our, the princess is there. But to find is a place that you must, you must visit. You're going to see that the structure of the family especially put a lot of pressure on the man. By 18 years old, you need to start having your own income coming in. It's all about being responsible and accountable for what you do. Because you cannot ashamed the name of your ancestors. Sometimes there are things that I do. My father say, be careful. Don't be ashamed, Montio, which is actually Monte. Or don't be a shaming Choconcho, which is actually Chaconte, because you're tied to that ancestor. So I must be great. I will be great. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> yes, indeed, brother. Yeah, come, come in, sir. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, um, just to let you know how that, um, the, how, that, how that concept is really the backbone of a people being great again, because you're never going to blame somebody for your failure, okay? Oh, yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't succeed in school. Oh, because, yeah, my friend was bothering me too much or he was making me talk on the phone. No, 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 no. It's, it happened because you, it's, it's you. You're gonna have to pick up yourself and then go out there and make it happen. And therefore you're gonna be qualified to go after your ancestors and ask them for support, for help. They only help you if you're doing something, that's it. No question asked, you know? Um, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be blaming on some devil 
that came to like no 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 devil came to you it was you <laughs> yeah so it's all about our accountability you know you we gotta be accountable for what we do and not just that um you know once you become that now all your actions that you will be uh, uh making will be very you know in your back of your head you will always have the fact that hmm hmm you know it's just not me if i keep going to jail i keep going to jail i mean i'm not just hurting me as a matter of fact you're not hurting you you're hurting your entire family plus your lineage for plus your ancestors because that's the that's the name that's the blood it's 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 everything you are not even including the offspring that you're bringing so you are that link and you don't want to be that link you don't want to be the weakest link you don't want to be the link that's link. you want to be the link that continue the greatness of your lineage so ancestry is everything so i think this was a good conclusion unless everybody anybody has anything to add or say think uh based on what the conversation that we had we understand how important this is uh brother justin i don't know if she's still here but uh you can pretty much tell them a little bit what you've been doing the, ba the basic things that i asked you to do as far as to start communicating and you know introducing yourself to 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 your ancestors are you there yes yes i'm here and um I'll just say thank you again, everyone, for sharing this knowledge. Um, I'm paying very close attention. And to speak on some of the things that, you know, for me communicating with you, asking how can I, what best way can I connect with the ancestors? Um, basically, from what I gathered from you is that I need a, a natural, a natural material such as wood, preferably wood, and that I would fill that up with water like a wooden bowl or a wooden cup something natural fill it up with water and um ensure that my feet are touching the, the ground the grass the dirt but they need to be connected and um I would basically you know pour the water on the ground in like either three times five times or seven times but I will pour the water and call on the name of the ancestor who I'm trying to communicate with. And um, that's when I would essentially make the demand. And, and, and from what I gather is, like you said, it's not worshiping. I'm not praying. I'm not, you know, begging or asking for anything. We're just, we're just talking. And um, I'm, I will be, it will be the same as if my father was here and I would ask him for advice or for help. And um, so, yeah, those are some of the things that I've been I've been doing um, basically with Brother Monte advising me on it. And as I said, I have a Christian background, so um, it is it does. It did seem a little weird at first, only because I was so totally unfamiliar with this. Pro I had never, you know, did it before and I had never seen anyone do it. But, you know, I'm just listening to what he's telling me to do. So I'm getting as I. As I wrap my head around, you know, the effect that organized religion and colonization had on the psyche of our people, I, I get more comfortable with it. But um, I, I still think that I have a lot more to learn about it. That's why this was very helpful for me to to hear this and to hear you, your perspective on it. Um, and I'm sure I'll be calling you <laughs> with more questions in the future. But yeah, so those are the those. That's what I have been doing. Um, I haven't did the inside one yet as you told me, but um, I do do it outside. I do do it outside. And yeah, so thank you for that. Wow. You, you're welcome. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Go. Yes, yes, he's been, he's been, uh, yeah, Justin, yes. Um, just I'll tell you something, go go slow, go on your own pace. Um, as you information, you can ask me, but go on your own pace. But yes, you just described what I told you right there. And keep this in mind, you, when you call the name of that person, you know that person, it, th that person is gonna show up, not, nothing else, nothing else is gonna show up. Because as you call in the name of that person, you're also thinking about that person. Not, nobody else, it's like when you're dialing, when you're dialing a, a number, you know, dialing a number, you send that frequency. 
that first that frequency goes with call that person. If I'm calling Moncam today, I have his number. If I press his number and I press call, he's gonna call Moncam. He's not gonna call nobody else. So simple, bro. Yeah. And, and, and to and uh, to give background to just to share with the group, to give background, I'm I'm not afraid to share it. That that was one of my concerns with doing the offering the libations and, and communicating with the ancestor. Um, like I said, I, I have a Christian background, Baptist to be specific. And my concern was that if I'm trying to communicate with essentially the dead, you know, we've always been taught that you can't do that. Um, you're not supposed to do that. And by me trying to tap into those, that, that spiritual realm, I could be invoking negative or evil demonic spirits by trying to communicate with the ancestors so that's what i had to reach out to brother monte for it but the way he explained it to me it made you know a hundred a hundred percent perfect sense um i don't know if you want to share that with them but it made a hundred percent um sense so that's not a concern anymore but that is one of the things that did you know bother me or prevented me from doing it Okay, I guess if anyone else wanted to go through the same process, they should get in touch with Brother Monty then. Yes, they I can I can just say it here. I mean it's it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. You need you need, you need what you need is is water or whatever they like, if they like if the person like some kind of wine, it has to be liquid form. Anything in a liquid form. But something I was telling my brother Justin is that um, the attempt slavery, you must understand something that slavery had nothing to do with physical, with our physical body. So when they put the chain right here, right? They put the chain here. That's not what slavery was about. Slavery was about put the chain in here in the brain, in our subconscious. That's what it was about. Because the chain, we were so strong to the point we were cutting the chain. At some point we were, we were cutting the chain. That's strong, that's the, the strong, the, the intelligence and how a black man was strong, we were cutting it. So in order for them to succeed, they had to attack our mind. And there is no better way to attack somebody's mind than attacking his spiritual system attack the spiritual system of the people, you have slaves, period, period. You attack the spiritual system of people, you make them believe something else, you made slaves. You don't need to have this. So that being said, they're gonna do everything to make you believe that if you call the name of your ancestor, you're inviting some evil spirit. I'm going to ask you guys a question. Go to the cemetery here on Sunday. What do people do in there, in the cemetery every Sunday? They're they visiting the flowers, grave. right? They're bringing new flowers, they, exchanging flowers, they go, cleaning the grave. They're site. bringing flowers, some of them. Some of them actually bring some fume that the person like, and they, they spray. I saw it spraying around. They, the, 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 the uh, tombs and whatever they spray around, they bring, what is that? I see European doing it all day here. There's a symmetry, there's not, a symmetry not far from here. I see them doing that all the time. What is that? And you see, they see, they talk, they talk to the dead person. Isn't it that evil too? So, you see the trick, brother. Don't be scared. Even for a second, even for a, a tenth of a second, don't be scared. This is some BS put on us. I'm even surprised how we don't realize this yet, but it's okay. It took them 400 years to do this to us. It is your father. It is your mother. It's your brother. It's you, you, their blood is in your blood. That's why you do, you do DNA, right? You do the DNA test. Why? How come they can connect you to a Bible kid? Your daisy circular in your vein. So they you. Nothing else. So if you call the name, they're coming. It's you. Nobody else is coming. What's this? That's some BS, bro. You know, but I understand, I understand. When you were made scared of your own self for so long, obviously 
you know, is going to, but we here, all the question that we have, I took this fight person on me. This is a fight that I took on me. And I always tell people the real fight is not out there with weapon. The real fight is this fight right here, spiritual fight. Because again, you can never subject it to, you can never subject it people only with weapon. You got to do an end spirit and the mind. If you do only weapon, listen, you're going to kill them off. One day they're going to rebel and they're going to overcome you. But once you get in here, you made yourself some, 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 some slave forever. That's just plain simple. And I know me coming here, doing the work that I do, you know, as far as me being productive, me doing this with you and stitching again about these things. Oh yeah, a lot of them don't like it, but so be it. So be it. You know, I could have just come here and sit down and say nothing, right? I don't have to do this. I don't have to reintroduce you to this. I can just come here and make my money and just, oh, they don't know it. Oh, I don't care. I don't, you know, it's not for me to show them. Uh, I don't, yeah. But because I know how important this is. I know how important this is. And unless we get you back to it, we on the motherland will not also, because we owe you something. And when I say we own you something, it means that it's not because we did something. We own you to reintroduce you again to your true self. Okay? Because you were the one who left by force, by, you know, you know what the evil they did. So therefore, those who stay, who remain and practice in the things, we must reintroduce you again to it the proper way. It is how personally I feel, and that's exactly how it should be. And that's exactly what the princess also is trying to do. Because the day that the Bamileke, for instance, are going to be able to travel to the United States and see a community here from our brothers and sisters that can have the same kind of spiritual system where they can rely. It's like, it's like you traveling to another Mecca. That would be, it will be heaven. We're going to have our ancestors that are, that are going to walk for us wherever we are and you will see. And then also that translated with, you know, all the other all the tribes and people in Africa. It's the same thing. You go, you go in all indigenous African traditions. This is the same thing. There's no different. Use different name uh, to call ancestor. We say in, in Fefe, in Nufi, we say in Fusie. Fusie. Some people might say something else. Uh, you know, but it's the same concept, you know. So my number is there, um, the, for the prince is also there. If you guys have any questions regarding that, it, it's it's very simple. I mean, you know, I'm sure you guys don't not scared to put the, the pictures of your deceased people in the house, right? I'm, you know, I've seen, you know, I go to houses, people have the pictures of the father who passed, the mother who passed in the, in the, in the salon, in the, in the living room. People put the picture of the grandma who passed in the living room, right? So if you're not scared of that, why would you be scared? Because when you put the picture, I don't know if you guys understand what it means to take, to put somebody picture like that. When you put somebody picture like that, it's an image of the person. You're actually inviting the person to always with you. That's pretty much what you're doing. That's why they want you to put that image of Jesus in your room. That's why they want you to put that fake image in your room. You know? So now when you put the pictures of your ancestor in your room or in your living room, you're actually inviting, that's the picture. That's what they look like when they were alive. They're always connected to that image. So you invited them somehow. But for, in order for you to enhance that they're coming, and you, you just don't know, you just connect when you need something, no. You talk to them. You know, I, I'm sure you, you you didn't go out, you didn't go and speak to that to your dad only when you needed something. Sometimes you speak to him, hey, dad, how's your day? What did you do today? How is it there? Are you cold? That's why you speak to him. You have water. If you if you're thirsty, uh-huh, here's water. How was it? Uh today I had a very difficult day. Man, this person, I mean, talking to him, I mean, he doesn't want to get me this deal. Man. I'm sure I'm going to find a way. I'm going to find a way how to, you know, how to make this work. You, you give him water again. Go ahead. Drink, drink. I know you like this drink. Drink. Yes. Oh, you remember this story? You, start, you talk to him the same way you were doing when you were, when you were alive. That's what you do. So 
So yeah. I'm just going to add something. First, I'm going to say, uh, you know, I really appreciate what you're doing, Brother Justin, and I'm going to congratulate you for that. I know uh, it doesn't come easy, especially uh, if it was brought up in the, um, in the Christian background and everything. I've been there myself, and I've actually gone through that myself at the moment. Uh, I've got a few of my family members who became born again. And they stopped following the tradition. They stopped doing everything. And then my thing is, when I look at them, it's like, okay, we used to be doing this together. We used to be doing that. And I said, I know if you keep doing that, if you keep going in the school room, you're going to be opening your, you know, your spirit to all kind of evil spirit. And I said to them, all this skull over here, they're our ancestor. You know, we got your das, 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 das for, from so many years. So you want to tell me that uh, if I speak to my dad now, nah, he's going to return me a bad spirit. You know, so which in, it's not easy when somebody go on the other way, on the very, very deep into Christianity. You know, they just come out, erase everything. But I wouldn't consider, it doesn't matter what position, if, even if I'm here now, and then my dad just appear over here, I'll talk to him. <laughs> you know, he's not going to come over there to just maybe something bad. He's not going to do anything bad. I mean, another testimony I had, I mean, uh, normally when I travel in Cameroon, there's no way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave Cameroon without going in the, in the remote village because... Uh, the family home is quite far. It's in. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's just about the Simale Airport. It's in Balmayo, which is like very close to Yaoundé, about twenty-five minutes to Yaoundé. So from Yaoundé to over the, the west, the western part of Cameroon is quite far. And I went in Cameroon one year. Uh, was only was only one week. I probably about six days because I had something to do in the capital. So I was quite busy doing everything I had to do. And I didn't think that I was going to be able to travel in the Western part and back again because uh, I was like 24 hours to my flight back to England. But I couldn't travel without going to, the, to, to visit my ancestor. But I took the, a driver. We drove all the way to the Bamileke area. And then when we got over there, when we got to Bafang, there was so many a heavy, heavy rain. The car couldn't actually go from there to the to the village. Probably about another forty minutes from Bafan going towards Babone. For anyone went to Babone area, going towards Babone and then go deeper from there. There was the only way it was going on the on the motorbike, and there was no motorbike at all. So I was standing there at the at the at the station, waiting for anyone to turn up. Nobody came in, and then some guy said, "Oh, you know what?" My cousin actually got a motorbike, but I'm gonna call him if he can if he can do that. But I'm not too sure because there's a lot of rain. But uh, he managed to get the guy. We went on the motorbike, and by when I was waiting for the answer, I was like praying to the ancestor. I was saying that you know I wasn't actually in the village yet, but I was just in Bafa. I was saying you know what, Dad, I came over here to see you. Please allow me to get and see you and then back again. You know, and then the guy just turned up and they said, okay, you, is it you? He said, well, so I jumped on the thing. We went there. Honestly, brother, it wasn't easy to get to get in the village. I mean, we had to stop a few times. I had to walk and then uh, jump on the motorbike again. And then uh, we did that so many times, but I managed to get there. And uh, I won, the guy was, the motorbike was waiting outside. And then he kept shouting, we got to go very fast because the rain is, is getting deeper. So I went where I have to go opened the door and I went in there. I spoke, it was probably maximum half an hour. And then when I spoke, I said again to the ancestor, you know what, I'm going back tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to get to, to get my flight ticket, but please, can you allow me to go back again, you know, return safely. And I jumped on the motorbike and then we went, it wasn't easy. Went there, got the car in uh, in, Yaun, in in Bafa. We drove back again. So I did the whole journey, probably about 20 hours driving, and then uh, only for half an hour. And then when I get over there, you know, I got to the airport, everything. I went, went home, changed my clothes. I had the mud everywhere. Changed my clothes, straight away, and then everything, get to the airport. Got my plane back home, and then, I, you know, everything just went, went very, very good. But trust me, if I was probably going to Bafang, 
uh, to that area for something else, maybe having fun, maybe club in a party. I'm sure I wasn't gonna be able to make it that way. Yeah. So it's not easy, it does. It does well where you connect to the ancestor. You guys see there? Still here. Yes. Uh, yep, still here. Yes. Um, yeah, this is it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I have my daughter that's uh, kind of like crying right now, but yeah, I think we, we, uh, I guess, um, uh, this was it, and then, um, I ju I'm just gonna let you close up, but I'm come, please. Okay, all right, so, uh, I think anyone got anything to add before we can actually close the meeting? Uh, I'm gonna say thanks to everyone, thanks, Brother Monte, that was really awesome, uh, information, everything, thanks to Sister Mipo you know, everything, and to everyone here, thanks to Mommy, your input was really awesome as well. And thanks for all the questions, Brother uh, Prince, and the other Prince, Prince Eloni, Prince Elen Kweni, and did I forget anyone? Uh, Brother Justin, thanks again, you know, for your input and, you know, going, going by the tradition and starting your journey. So anyone got anything to add before we can close it? Yeah, uh, I didn't hear Pamela at all. Is she there, Pamela? There? Oh, Sister Pamela forgot, sorry. Thank you, Sister Pamela. Thank you for... Yeah. She's probably in a computer or maybe she can't really talk right now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys for another great uh, learning session. I appreciate you all and everybody that shared. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna say goodbye. And uh, let's meet again next weekend. Have a blessed weekend, everyone. You too, man. Bye. Right. Our DNA still remains the same connected with those who are on the continent. Africa, Africa, we are one and we are together. Oh. Africa, 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 we are one and we are together. Oh. Africa